I'm Melissa Kovac. I am the owner and co-founder of Make and See Handmade Goods, and I am based in Denver, Colorado. Make and See, which is an old-fashioned way to say etc. or other similar things, it was an idea that was born years and years ago. Um, I love to craft. I love making things with my hands. I love um, gifting things that have a purpose for people. Um, and when the pandemic hit, I kind of took it as a a sign, I guess, uh, from the universe to say, you know, let's get things moving. Um, and I opened up Make and See um, with the idea that we would stock our store with things that um, you wouldn't necessarily see in other gift shops um, and things that were made very artisanally in very small batches um, and something that adds a little bit more of an experience when you're, when you're receiving those items. My husband and I, for many years before our son was born, work with or volunteer with a rescue organization here in Colorado. We used to foster dogs on a regular basis. And every year, like most rescues, they need um, obviously lots of funds to kind of make the whole process happen. Every year they have a big annual fundraiser towards the end of the year around the holidays. That year I made candles for the annual fundraiser. I'd never made candles before in my life. I usually would make you know, dog blankets or bandanas or or sweaters for that annual fundraiser and this year I don't know what overpowered me to want to make candles but I made a collection of three candles representing the different stages of the rescue process and they were a huge hit um, for that fundraiser people gave them as gifts um, raised a few thousand dollars from that those sales for the rescue um, and then my husband and I love candles so much um, and the pandemic hit and I figured that might as well try to learn a new hobby um, and it kind of took off unexpectedly um, and now um, we've had such great success with the candles that I haven't had the chance to actually do any other types of crafts for Make and See, which is a good problem to have. It wasn't something that I necessarily knew or had a lot of experience with, so I did a lot of research at first, lots of trial and error. Um, it's a lot of science in, in candle making, um, determining the type of wax to use, the type of wick to use, the ratio of your fragrance oils, um, and then getting it all to burn nicely and evenly is another big challenge. Um, but once you kind of tweak that, um, it's a seamless you know, step and repeat process of melting the wax down, getting it to the right temperature, um, pouring it into the right vessel, wicking, and then setting and curing. It's a little bit of science experiment every day, making the candles, but it's been fun. You essentially start with obviously melting your wax. You have to get it to a certain degree. We use an all natural soy wax at Make and See, and that temperature for melting is around 200. And then you let it cool to your flash point. Flash point is where the wax is at the point where you can add your oil. You know, that it takes probably 10, 10 or so minutes for that wax to cool off. You add the oil and you stir it for about two minutes with the oil to let it kind of do its sciencey thing with the wax. Um, and then you let it rest for probably 10 more minutes, 12 more minutes to let it get to a point where it's about 135 degrees Fahrenheit to pour into your vessel. So while that's cooling off, I would typically take your whatever vessel I'm using and you put the wick in or wicks, um, depending on the size of the vessel, and get them all prepped and ready. And then once the wax is cooled off, you would pour it into the vessel and then you center the wick with a, like a, I use chopsticks at one point back in the early days to center them. And then um, once it cures about two weeks, it takes about two weeks for your uh, ideal curing time, so that way when you're burning your candle, the throw or the smell of the, the wax is going to fill a room, ideally. The longer you let a candle cure, the better it's going to burn, and the better it will smell. And then you repeat and repeat and repeat.
either with a logo, sticker, or if it's big enough, like these ones, we do um, the actual sticker uh, with the candle name. And then we put a warning label on the bottom. Important, especially when you're dealing with fire. Unfortunately, found you guys um, too late in my sticker creation game when I first started making C and needing a ton of different labels for our candles. Um, we need, you know, round labels. We need square labels. We need different diameters for every different type of vessel, from a small sample tin to our bigger dough bowls. Um, coming up with a good supplier that also has the same values in their company versus a very big box store. Like a nothing wrong with them, um, just not where we align vision based. Um, and so I started off, you know, going to your bulk sticker companies or just printing them myself, which was not that fun for me. I found you guys just by doing a lot of searching on Instagram, to be honest with you. When I first, when I received my first round of stickers from Sticker Mountain, I was immediately blown away by the quality. We do try in all of our candle making, other than our waxes, we do try to support local Colorado companies. Our minerals come from a maker, a fellow maker in Southern Colorado at Pueblo. Obviously our creative director is based here in Colorado as well. So we try to work with Colorado businesses. So when I found that you guys were based in Denver, we're in Denver, um, makes it easy to turn around quick designs. And also the quality is just insurmountably better than any sticker company I've ever worked with and affordable in terms of the quantity that we need. And you're very fast in your shipping. If I have a collection that needs to go out, I can't, obviously I can't unsticker everything or unlabel things. So it's just a, it's a great connection. And I'm, I wish I found you sooner. I was drawn to the fact that, again, that you were local, but also just the quality of your stuff on Instagram seemed to speak for itself. You seem like a very fun company. You enjoy what you're doing. I love that they seem to love what they do as much as I love what I do. Um, and they put in a lot of effort to their quality and their production process um, in, in the same way I would. Uh, and you can tell by the end result and the final deliverable that, you know, as much thought into the creation of a candle that I put in, you put in with your production process as well. And the stickers just, you know, tie everything up in a nice bow and really present our products in a perfect way. They don't fall off. They're not too sticky. They're not difficult to put on the product. I've worked, I've had stickers be, you know, fall off at events. It's embarrassing when you're transporting things, they stick together and rips or you have to reposition something. It gives you that allowance versus having like a paper-based sticker that tears. Plus it, it weathers well in terms of time. They don't fade which is important for us, obviously, for a branding perspective, but also they withstand the heat of a candle very well, and they don't yellow or tarnish or anything like that. At the end of the day, the quality, I think, is, is the best part. I am currently testing a ton of new fragrant oils for um, our spring collection, spring summer collection. We'll be launching probably four to five new candles in the next month um, based on the tests results. I have a select um, group of VIPs who get um, some samples to smell and burn. Um, and then once I get all those results back, um, I tweak the process or tweak the smells and or re-blend if they, none of them really throw well. Um, and then I work with my wonderful creative director on designing our labels for that collection and then printing them at Sticker Mountain. A lot of the testing process too with our testing group is, you know, the toppings, how, how I like to finish it either with a mineral, a collection of minerals or a collection of dried flowers, just depending on the scent um, and then the overall look I want to give the candle. I think that's really what makes our candles stand out a lot is the fact that we do use fresh florals that have been dried here locally in Colorado um, or the use of the, the hand crushed minerals um, and then different types of gems. Um, a lot of them have different meanings and different energies to them, which we kind of build into the actual candle collection um, and the naming and, and all that fun you know, branding side of things. I test mostly, since I, I know our wax, the wax we like to use is that soy, all natural soy wax. That part is kind of locked and loaded. Um, 
it's really just the blending of the oils, whether or not it burns well or, you know, smells good in terms of trying to appeal to many people, um, men and women, in terms of what type of fragrances they like and trying to align it with the seasons. I have my group of, of ladies that I have chosen um, to send those samples off to and they will let me know how it burns, if it tunnels, um, if it doesn't throw the smell good enough or if it's too strong. Um, and they'll send me their notes after they receive those samples and I, I take all that feedback and apply it to the actual collection creation. Usually it's just one usual round of feedback. If it doesn't work or the smell just doesn't smell as good as we thought, sometimes the smell when you, you know, when you blend a, an oil blend with more than one oil, um, it might smell a little different when it's curing than when it's burning. So that's usually the biggest thing, as well as if we're trying out different types of wicks. Um, we're using you know, either a flat wooden wick or a spiral wooden wick or a cotton braided wick to kind of understand how that candle is going to burn with those types of wicks um, and the whole aesthetic presentation of the candle too. A lot of people love wooden wicks, a lot of people don't um, in terms of the sound, crackle sounds. Um, and some people just like the way um, the cotton wick looks. Um, it's a little smaller, wooden wick has a wire um, burn. So getting all of that feedback from different people is really helpful. Tunneling is a very unfortunate thing that happens in candle making. Your wax is off with the wick, and what happens is essentially if you have a cylinder like one of these, it would just tunnel down rather than burning wide and having a wide melt pool so it would you know, cleanly burn all the way through. A tunnel would essentially tunnel through and you would be left with a ring of extra wax that actually doesn't burn. You've used the wrong wick with that vessel. It's not you know, thick enough or wide enough to make a big enough melt pool for that diameter. And obviously when you pay for a candle, that's you're getting half the value of it, um, which not gonna lie, you know, I tunneled a lot in the beginning because I didn't understand the relationship between the wax and the wick and the vessel and thought that you could just use any wick with any wax, and which is why, you know, I do, I do that feedback round. It's really helpful, especially when I'm trying out new wicks. Eventually we will stock um, Make and See with other handmade goods like you know, embroidered tea towels, dog blankets, any type of sewn good, any type of knit good, baby hats, baby blankets, things along those lines. And so it, that's the, I guess, the vision of Make and See is that it would be, you know, a menagerie of different items that we can make with our four hands. I am proud of everything I make, I think, but also not to cop out of the answer. Um, I think some of my favorite stuff to make are, you know, heirloom items like a baby blanket um, or, you know, a baby cocoon in terms of like a newborn. Any type of item that can be carried down generations I really love making um, in terms of like a fabric, sewing, crocheting, knitting, those types of tactile things would be probably what I'm most proud of. My love language, um, how I love people, I guess you would call it, is by gifting um, and I think that's why I love doing it so much is because that's how I really show I care for somebody is by giving them something that I've spent a lot of time and creativity and, and thought to making for them. Christy Valicenti is my creative director here at Make and See. Um, she's an amazing illustrator and creative mastermind. Her and I work together on concepts for the designs um, based on, you know, essentially aesthetics that I like in terms of keeping it very minimal, keeping it very, um, a little bit of artsy flair to it. Um, obviously bringing in the Make and See brand palette and, you know, visual identity into each of the, each of the labels. Um, but we, we strive for a very minimalist approach to the design so that the focus is on the product, um, but also making our stamp on it too. Um, and I think that having something that is warm and approachable in terms of a design aesthetic is, is important for our customers to understand that we think about everything that goes into that um, very meticulously. And I think that's why um, on our designs and our labels, um, you can kind of see that thoughtfulness put into it. Um, and then Christy takes my convoluted ideas and makes it beautiful um, and a work of art. So I, I strive for that in terms of making it so that people remember us, but also can be, become a part of our brand and that experience. And we like to make it easy to read, any of that logistical stuff. Um, we have a lot of fun with our names. Um, we're big into puns. 
Um, so we, we try to keep it humorous as well, um, but also just creating like a, a brand that people can relate to um, from a personality perspective. I think when you go to different makers markets and different events, um, you can get a really good vibe on a, on a brand just by their identity system. Um, and so at Make and See, we're striving to create that type of personality that people can connect with on, a, on you know, all walks of life, um, no matter what type of item you're looking to gift, even if you don't think you're ready or not, even if you think that you don't need a gift, you know, and you see something, maybe you gift something for yourself um, and connect with that person on a, on a deeper level. Thank you.